Washington sets out for Boston and on the way, he's in New York, when a dispatch comes from Boston for Congress and realizes he's on official business, he should see what it says, and it's news of the Battle of Bunker Hill. In June, uh, three new British generals had arrived in Boston, Burgoyne and Clinton and Howe, and they had left England thinking, boy, you know, the gauge is holding on in Massachusetts. There are some recalcitrant rebels. They reach Boston and find out that Gage is surrounded by 20,000 militia troops and doesn't have the possibility of getting fresh provisions, water, firewood. You know, these may not seem like significant things to us, but imagine there is no way to cook or heat the house, particularly on a day like today. And the British in Boston were doing what would have come naturally, which is knocking down fences, cutting down trees, taking off shingles, knocking down some old buildings, including the old Church of the Mathers in the North End. And we take this as being mean-spirited. It's simple common sense that you need firewood. You're not going to care whose old church this is or whose benches these are or fences or so on. So the British had decided to, as General Burgoyne said, get a little elbow room, march out of Boston through Charlestown over to Cambridge, disperse the rebel camps there in Cambridge, and then go south to Roxbury, disperse the rebels there, get a wider area, and send these folks back into the countryside, and hopefully they would all go home and forget about the rebellion. That was the idea. And in fact, on the um, 15th of June, Henry Clinton, General Henry Clinton, had gone to scout out the ground on Breeds Hill and Bunker Hill, the highest points north of Boston, and there were pasture land you know, rising behind the town of Charlestown. There was nothing there. So early the next, the next day, the British begin their assaults. It's now mid-afternoon on a hot June day, and these British troops march up Bunker Hill, or Breed's Hill. And the idea isn't to get Breed's Hill. The idea is to keep marching till you get to Cambridge. But at the top of Breed's Hill, this battery that had not been there the day before opens fire on them, something they had not expected. These rebels overnight had put up a fortification that these British troops can't take. They retreat, the survivors retreat to the bottom of the hill. General Howe orders another assault. General Clinton notices that there are sharpshooters aiming at these British ranks from the town of Charlestown. So he has the ships in the harbor lob some burning devices into the town to burn it down. The British begin another assault to the top of the hill again. They encounter this fire from the battery on the top of Breed's Hill. They turn back again, they get to the bottom, and now Howe says, we're going to drop our packs. They've been carrying three days' worth of provisions, tents and other things. They're going to drop their packs, take this hill, which they do. By this time, the rebels are almost out of ammunition. And so they do then what was extraordinary for men who were not trained soldiers. Some men stay in the battery to hold off the British assault until the rest of the army can get back to Cambridge. They realize they can't hold the hill forever. At the end of the day, the British hold Breed's Hill. And 900 British casualties out of an army of about 3,000. More of the officers the British lose in the Revolutionary War, one out of every eight died on that day in June of 1775. And um, Nathaniel Green, an officer from Rhode Island, said he wished he could sell them another hill at the same price. <laughs> General Howe said that small armies like ours can't afford such large casualties. This was a disaster. And even worse, Howe and the other British officers believed, if the Americans have a chance to fortify a position, we can't attack it. For the rest of the war, the British would never try to attack a position the Americans had had time to fortify. Howe later said that these men could do overnight what would take his men three months to accomplish. And he talked about his soldiers worrying now about these Americans who were able to fly through the air like Aladdin's genie and place a fortification at the top of a hill. They didn't know that the Americans were almost out of ammunition. Um, but they no longer thought that this was just a rabble of undisciplined farmers who would scatter at the first sight of a really well-trained army. 